China unveiled a slew of economic data over the weekend, and analysts are now optimistic that the country can hit its growth target this year. Zhang Chengying reports. China's gross domestic product grew by 5.5 percent year-on-year in the first half of 2023, despite the complex international environment and domestic challenges. That's according to China's National Bureau of Statistics. Specifically, industrial output grew 4.4 percent in June from a year earlier, accelerating from 3.5 percent seen in May, which, according to experts, reflects the country's long-term emphasis on strengthening supply chains. Uh, the industrial performance is actually above the market consensus, and it reflected a strength in China's uh, high-end equipment manufacturing, especially in the new energy sector. And when it comes to the demand side, retail sales, which is a key metric for consumption, grew 8.2 percent year-on-year in the first half. Dr. Xu Gao, chief economist of Bank of China International, attributes the steady growth to the improved business sentiment after the pandemic, as people were more willing to get about and to spend. People's need to consume has been further released after the pandemic, so there's an increasing demand. And thanks to the government's policy to boost consumption, people are getting more confident, more willing to spend money. However, if we look at the 3.1 percent increase in June alone, it slowed from a 12.7 percent jump in May, which reflects that we still face some downward pressure. Experts believe that China's economy is still in a recovery mode in the global landscape. And despite all the domestic and global challenges, they remain optimistic about China's economic outlook. And the 5 percent growth target is attainable. Given the economic performance, 5 percent growth is not too high to achieve. Besides, there's another main target, the stabilization of the labor market. More macroeconomic policies are expected to further stimulate the economy, to create more jobs, and make more young people get employed. And when it comes to another pillar of China's economic growth, import and export trade, analysts also pointed out challenges remain, given the uncertainties in the global market, including geopolitical tensions and inflation in the U.S. and European countries. Yet they still believe that China's import and export trade will continue to demonstrate resilience in the second half of this year, thanks to the country's efforts in optimizing its trade structure and the fact that China remains the biggest manufacturer in the world. Zhong Chunying, CGTN, Beijing. Okay, there's a lot going on behind these numbers. Let's pour through all that. And for that, we're going to turn to our friend Anthony Chan, former chief economist at J.P. Morgan Chase. Anthony, thanks very much for taking some time. Thank you for having me. Uh, firstly, I want to get your take on this data, because depending on which entity you read and which periodical is covering it, it's either you know, disappointing news because they didn't meet their goals, but still a growth rate of more than 6 percent. There seems to be a lot of positive here. Well, there is, because remember, that number is on a year over year basis. When you look at the number on a quarter over quarter basis, that's when you see the weakness. But the real disappointment uh, is the fact that earlier in the year, the hope and expectation was that China's economic growth was going to be off to the races, and we might even get 6 percent economic growth. Now it's looking like we're going to get about 5 percent, maybe a little bit more. But guess what? Compared to the United States, that's not bad. Yeah, there are a lot of nations out there that would like to have 5 percent growth right now. Let's look about some of the uh, areas of concern, some of the areas people are kind of focusing on. Consumer spending. A lot of uh, people are apparently right now paying down debt rather than investing in the new big ticket item or saving their money. Does that make sense? Well, it does, because remember, unlike in the United States, where there was a lot of pandemic aid helping consumers sort of continue to maintain their spending, that stuff didn't happen in China. So therefore, the consumer sector didn't get as much support uh, during the pandemic as they did in the United States. Mm. So guess what? You're going to see that, sec that sector a little bit weaker. So do you think that we're going to see more stimulus coming out of Beijing, especially for some of the manufacturing areas or, or the, even the small businesses, which really obviously got hammered uh, during the pandemic? Well, if you look at what the Chinese government has done, is they've continued to support corporations. They've continued to support uh, small businesses. And yes, there's going to be a lot more stimulus. We're going to see monetary policy lowering interest rates a bit. 
maybe another 10 basis points. We also are going to expect another reserve requirement cut. Uh, and monetary policy is probably going to target some sectors out there to keep the economy going. But once again, you've got to understand, and everybody does, that the uh, housing sector mm. is another sector that we have to worry a little bit about. That has continued to be weak all year round. And of course, we saw nothing different in this report. Look, this is so important on a global scale because really China has been the economic en engine for such a long time that the world has been able to depend upon, especially when people are talking about uh, inflation, uh, perhaps triggering even more uh, uh, drag for the global economy. But let's look at a couple of problems that China has now. The young unemployment rate, certainly something that, that is a concern, and also the restrictions that especially the United States has put on in their uh, high tech sector. Well, these are all uh, negative headwinds. Uh, you saw that youth unemployment rate at 21.3 percent, very high. There's a bit of a mismatch between the type of job skills that they have and the type of sectors that are expanding. My suspicion is that over time, that will work itself out. With regard to the issues with, defl with inflation, one of the great things that China has that other parts of the world don't have is that they have very low inflation. Hmm. In fact, you can argue they have deflation, and that allows them to stimulate the economy, unlike other central banks like Europe or even in the United States, where they can't even imagine uh, stimulating with monetary policy because they're dealing with inflation. Right. China is not. Yeah, and here in the U.S., we're talking at least perhaps another a couple of uh, basis points bump upward before the end of the year. So certainly China is looking pretty good from that standpoint. What are some of the real bright spots for the Chinese economy that may get lost as people are looking at the negatives? Well, the bright spot is that you're still seeing very strong infrastructure uh, investment. Some people would argue maybe it's not needed. But keep in mind that it is stimulating the overall economy, and you're still seeing decent fixed asset investment in the manufacturing sector. That's a bright spot. Again, that weak spot is the housing sector. And another weak spot is we're still not seeing enough private sector uh, investment. So hopefully, with a little stimulation from monetary policy and maybe some more tax incentives, you're going to start to see the private sector fixed asset investment picking up. So all these things are possible the more you see the government taking a more activist approach. So if all these pieces do fall into place, do you think that the unemployment that is really uh, disappointing for so many uh, people just getting out of college in China, do you see that moving in a more positive direction? Well, I really hope so. And, and one thing I have to mention, uh, Sean, is that the urban unemployment rate even though it's low, uh, to some extent that's understated because you've seen a lot of migrants going back to the mm. rural areas, so therefore they're not counted in the, in the unemployment rate. So it's a little bit higher, but one of the things that you'll need is more investment, maybe a little bit more economic growth when all the stimulus takes place, and that will lower the unemployment rate. But it's going to take some time. Anthony Chan, we always appreciate your insight. Thanks very much. My pleasure.